Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth video in the how to make a 2D platformer course. Today we're going to be taking a look at making our background and foreground elements tile as the player progresses. It will allow us to create very small levels but still the player will be able to infinitely explore them. So that's going to be really awesome. We're going to talk about a lot of cool calculations uh, with the camera to world position. We are going to do um, some performance optimization. It's going to be really awesome. So yeah, let's get started. And of course, if you don't want to do all of the scripting, which is understandable, uh, though I think it's wise if you do, uh, please go to brackies.com uh, where you can go to the 2D platformer page and uh, download the, all the scripts and assets and everything else right here for free. Uh, so if you have errors, that's a good place to go. Awesome. So let's open up Unity. And uh, it's just as we left it the last time. One thing I do want to go ahead and tweak, though, is that I want to get a little bit more parallaxing on the foreground. Uh, right now, the effect is a bit too subtle. So what I realized is because we have an uh, autographic camera, we can simply just move it forward. So let's just drag out the blue background so we won't affect it. And let's just uh, move the ba uh, main camera backward is what I meant to say. So let's just move, move it a bit back here. Uh, you can move it as far as you want as long as it's inside of this rectangle. Uh, but let's just move it like there. And uh, then let's drag the blue background back on the main camera. Then we can simply take our foreground and uh, we can just move it over. So right about here, I think is going to be good. Yeah, that's just now the parallaxing is more apparent and it looks like the ground is closer to the camera, which is nice. Cool. So let's let's go ahead and actually create the script. Uh, but before we start writing it, let me just explain what it's going to do. So I've made this drawing, uh, this explanation drawing here, and uh, I of course excuse my drawing skills, I am not so practiced in the art of drawing with a computer mouse. But uh, what I've drawn here is uh, the player in the center, which can uh, he can move to the uh, left and the right. Up and down won't matter for this tutorial, we are going to focus on the x-axis. And uh, this rectangle here represents what the camera sees. This red line down here is the foreground element, which is going to work just like the background. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take point A here, which is the X position of the, um, of the extent of the foreground here. So we're going to take the edge here and we're going to take the X position of that. And then we're going to take the uh, B point here, which is going to be um, the um, extent of the camera. So in world points, what is the camera seeing? And then we're going to ask ourselves, is A bigger than B? So is this ground further out than B? If it's not, then we're going to go ahead and instantiate a new one. And we're going to do the same over here. So it's C lot, uh, smaller than D. Uh, and if not, then we want to uh, go ahead and spawn something. And the uh, the things we're going to spawn are just the same element, which we're going to repeat. Uh, and the foreground I've made repeatable, but the background I have not. So we're going to do a cool trick with that, uh, where we revert its uh, size so that we won't get a weird um, clipping issues. So we're going to look into that. Uh, but basically, we're going to instantiate uh, what we're going to refer to as a buddy, um, which is basically just a clone of the uh, the element. And then we're going to position it so it just aligns with the element itself. And to take care of performance, we're going to uh, have some variables saying that do we have a left body? And do we have a right body? And if we have both, uh, we are not going to do these calculations at all. So that's the basics of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so let's delve right into it. So I'll keep that open in case we need it. And uh, let's go ahead and select our foreground dirt here. And uh, let's create a new script. Actually, before that, let's disable parallaxing in our GM object because uh, that will uh, 
uh, interfere with the um, with the instantiation of, of new grounds. Uh, I have a trick for that and we're going to fix it uh, soon, but when, when we're debugging, we're just going to disable that. Cool, so let's select the foreground dirt. Let's hit Add Component, New Script, and let's call this mm, Tiling. Let's keep it simple. Let's double click this to open it up in Mano Develop. Awesome. So this script is going to be pretty long, uh, but it's not too complicated. Uh, it just has many parts. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, require a component. And this is a really awesome feature. Oops, let me zoom in here so you can see what's going on. Oh man, it's good that I didn't forget that. Um, we are, we're going to require a component, uh, meaning that once we attach this script, uh, Unity is automatically going to check if a component is attached to the game object, and if not, it's going to create one. So that's really awesome because we're going to uh, only use this script with sprite renderers, so we're going to require a sprite renderer. To do this, type two square brackets, and inside of those, type require component. Then open up some parentheses where we're going to type type of, and then open up another set of parentheses where we're going to do sprite renderer. This is a good way to make sure that we always have a sprite renderer attached, so we won't get errors in our code. Awesome. Uh, wow, I said that like five times already, but it's awesome. We're going to declare some variables. The first one is going to be a public int, and this is going to store our offset. Uh, we want to offset this uh, just a tiny bit, uh, because if we check um, uh, the camera's position versus the ground's uh, edge here, if you check A and B uh, on the exact point, it is pretty prone to errors. So we are just going to um, make sure that B is like maybe two units to the left so that we will uh, or to the right so that we will always um, make sure uh, be sure that a body is instantiated before we get there so we're just going to offset the calculations a tiny bit so we're going to do offset x equals let's just do two it's not that important just a tiny bit then we're going to do uh, public bool and a boolean is a true or false value. And we're going to see uh, name this has a right body. And we're going to default this to false. Then we're going to create another one, which is also going to be a public bool. Has a left body. And we're going to also going to default this to false. So these two are what we're going to check whenever we are instantiating. Does it already have a body? Do we even need to do the calculations and such? Then we're going to do public bool reverse scale. And this is also going to be equal to false by default. This is what we're going to use for the background elements that I've not made tileable. Then we're going to do private float. And in here, we're going to uh, store the width of our sprite so that we know how, um, how long the element is. So we can actually check these positions. So we're going to do sprite width equals 0f. Actually, let me comment out some of these. So this is going to be the, the offset so that we don't get any weird errors. Uh, these are used for checking if we need to instantiate stuff. Then we have the reverse scale used if uh, the object is not tileable. And then we have the sprite width, uh, which is uh, the width of our texture of our element let's call it that our element awesome and then right below this we're going to do private camera 
So we're just going to store a short reference to our camera just as we did in the last tutorial for performance reasons and because it's awesome. Uh, and then private transform my transform. And this is for a performance reason that we are storing the object's transform in a variable. Uh, it's just faster and generally good practice. Cool, let's now create a new function. So let's do void awake. And again, awake is where you want to do all of the referencing uh, thing between scripts. So we're going to do cam equals camera dot main. And we're going to do my transform equals transform. Uh, yeah, and the void start in here, we're going to assign the sprite renderer and we're going to check the width. So we're going to do sprite renderer. Uh, and let's just call this s renderer. It's not something that we're going to use frequently equals get component and then this is the syntax and then inside of these two signs we're going to write sprite renderer so that's the type of component that we want to get and i don't remember i'm pretty sure that you can only have one sprite renderer that would make sense so but this is just going to grab the first uh, component of the type you insert so if there's multiple it's just going to um, I'm going to return the first one. And then uh, we're going to do sprite width equals s renderer, so our sprite renderer dot sprite dot bounce dot size dot x. Okay, so that will give us the width of our element, uh, no matter how we size it. So that's that's a really great feature. Cool. Then in the update function, and this is where it, it gets uh, kind of exciting. What we're going to do here is first we're going to make an if statement. And inside of this, we're going to do has a right. Uh, yeah, let's do left first. Has a left body is equal to false uh, or um, has. And the, these two signs are used for or. And the reason why I copy pasted them is, is because my keyboard is being annoying right now with certain symbols um, just have to configure that these are called vertical bars if you cannot figure out how to make them on your keyboard just uh, write how to make vertical bar on google and you'll figure it out many people have asked me this so i just thought i wanted to say but these basically means or so whenever you're checking for something you can check um does it have a left body or does it have a right body? Cool. So then we're going to check has a right body. And this is going uh, is equal to false. And then close it off and let's do the parentheses. So open and close these. Yeah. Uh, so here we're just checking. Does it still need uh, bodies? If not, do nothing. Cool. So now we're going to calculate the camera's extent, meaning half the width of what the camera can see in world coordinates. So if we look at our drawing here, we're going to calculate the, uh, uh, the position B over here. So we're going to calculate the length from the center of the camera to the point B. So we do this by doing float cam horizontal extent is what we're going to call it and it's going to be equal to cam dot autographic size times screen dot width divided by screen dot height. So this will return, uh, this will equal to the, uh, the um, length from the center of the camera to its right bar. And uh, let's just comment this out also. So we're going to do calculate the camera's extent 
meaning half the width of what the camera can see and it's going to be in world coordinates versus pixels coordinates Great, so now right below this, we are going to calculate the X position where the camera can see the edge of the sprite. So we're going to take this into consideration, we're going to use the sprite width and the current uh, position of our object and we're going to calculate at what position the camera can see uh, the edge of the ground. So we're going to do uh, calculate the X position where the camera can see the edge of the sprite which is the element and we are going to write float edge visible position right so we're going to split it up into the right position and the left position and this one is going to be equal to my transform dot position dot x so our current x position plus sprite width divided by two because we we want to only get half of it um, because it's it's this distance here and uh, then we're gonna do uh, close off the parentheses and then we're gonna do minus cam horizontal extend so we are factoring in our own position then we are adding on half the sprite width, which is basically the sprite extend. And then we are subtracting the cam horizontal extend to figure out the position where we would intersect. Then we're going to do this uh, same calculation for the left position. So we're going to do edge visible position left equals my transform dot position dot x and then this time we're going to do minus sprite width divided by 2 plus cam horizontal extend so we are just inverting the calculations basically